Fox Sunday crew, they continue to crush. I, I want this Pete Carroll thing is great because Pete Carroll, I said, you're out of your mind. He, Drew Locke and Geno Smith, you're out of your mind. I look up and I'm like, Howie, they are going a thousand miles an hour. Pete's got them believing. You know his history with young players. What do you make of Seattle? Well, I think it's a it's a great setup for what Pete likes to do. Pete likes to coach young guys. Um, and, you know, I, I think they believe that Drew Locke was probably going to be the guy to win the job. And you remember that Drew Locke got COVID that week when they were, you know, kind of a pivotal week where they were going to make the decision and didn't get reps, didn't get in the game. And Gino hasn't looked back. And I think it's one of the great stories in the league this year. And, you know, you move on from Russell and, you know, all that comes with that. Yeah. And, and, you know, Russell had become, you know, kind of an icon up there. And, you know, having won a Super Bowl, coming within a yard of winning a second Super Bowl. We had so much fun covering those teams. And, you know, a big part of it was Pete's amazing energy. John Snyder, you know, did something they haven't they haven't done in a couple of years. He had a really good draft and they're yeah. getting great production out of young players. He's he's got a team that he this is the type of team that he loves to coach and they're going to squeeze every ounce of ability out of this football team and where they're going to go. I don't know, but uh, it's been a fun ride so far. You watch all these games. I contend when healthy, the Niners are the only team in the league with a Pro Bowl player in every single unit. Fred Warner, you can go to corner Trent Williams. I don't think there's another team like it. Um, I think they're the most talented team. A lot of people feel Buffalo is a, is a hall of famer. What do you see with the Niners? Well, I, I kind of see the same thing that you see, you know, health is an issue this year, but it's, it seems like it's been an issue for three, four years with the Niners. And it, it's really been more about, can they get everyone on the field? You know? Uh, and when you say pro bowl players, you're, you're talking about, you know, left tackle could be the best left tackle. Bosa could be the best yeah. defensive end from a complete player standpoint. Uh, Warner, I think, is clearly the best inside linebacker in football. Uh, and I and I think when you add a McCaffrey to, I, I think the way lost in all of this is the way Ayuk has played. And, you know, they're going to get Debo back and Kittle is as complete a player at his position as there is. And if they threw the ball more and Kittle was in a more dynamic offense, he'd have Star Wars numbers. Uh, I think this team, when healthy, can really – I think they could beat anybody. Yeah. Um, you know, we're, we're at a point in the season, eight games through, I think I know who's really good. I think Philadelphia is good. I think the Niners, when healthy, are good. Buffalo, Kansas City. Uh, I tend to think Cincinnati is better than most people do. Uh, I also think we know who's not good. Um, and then you kind of get into the Dallases. And Jason thinks they're really good. I think they can play a certain way. I think they're really good with a lead playing downhill with that pass rush. I don't think Dak trailing late. Mike McCarthy, I don't know if I trust. What do you make of Dallas? What do you like? What concerns you? Love the defense. Uh, Parsons is is a generational talent. And I, I think they learned a lot from that Philadelphia game where, you know, they, if they had him playing off, they threw the ball, if they had, had him playing on the line, they, they ran the either the, the read option or the RPO at him and put him in kind of no man's land. I I'm sure that uh, Dan Quinn will, will make sure that that's not the case because you, you, one thing you want is you want him flying around that defense is for real. Yeah. Uh, they fly around. They they force a lot of turnovers. Uh, the offense, I thought, changed a bit when Dak was out, and I thought it was for the better. I think running the football, Pollard, as we saw, you know, this this past weekend, uh, is adds a, adds a, an element of dynamic play to that position. No question. But I, I think Zeke is as important. You know, I think it, it, to me the one-two punch. Zeke is is the body blow, body blow, body blow, and and Pollard is the explosive player. Zeke is the closer, and I think Dak, compared to the Detroit game, looks so much more comfortable. And I think you know people were it was unfair to expect that 
after missing that many games, thumb surgery on your throwing hand for him to come out and be as smooth as could be. He looked much better uh, this past weekend. And I think uh, they're a team that with that defense and with the offense expanding with Dak's health and being comfortable, I think they can, they also can compete. See, the great thing about our, our league is, you know, in baseball, we're, it's two, three, two, it's two games in Houston, two games in Philadelphia, and then two games back in Houston with our playoff format, like, like no other sport it's, are you hot one day? Sure. Can your defense play great? Can your quarterback play great? Can you limit your mistakes? And you can advance and, you know, whether it's a wild card to divisional, divisional to championship game, and then on to the Super Bowl in Arizona. And, and I think that's why our game is so special because each game means so much. Is there, a, um, you know, with Aaron, I said earlier today, people say, hey, don't blame him for this. And I'm like, listen, he's a smart guy. He had young receivers coming in. He didn't want to go and work with him in the offseason. He took the $50 million, Good for him. But he's a smart guy. He knows there's limitations. And I look at it and I think to myself, well, this is, <laughs> this is kind of on this show what we said. He's not really a mentor guy. Uh, and it is hard. You're a veteran. You go back to your career the last couple of years. The rookies come in. You don't have a lot. You know, a lot of guys don't have a lot of patience. Um, do you have some sympathy? Hey, Sean, hey listen. Listen, Sean Jones lived with me. Chester McLaughlin lived with me. Chester McLaughlin came to it. God rest his soul. Missed Chester a great deal. Chester was 375 when we got him. He was playing two snaps, three snaps at Clemson, and then missing five. You know, yeah. and and there was a great player there, you know, in my mind, what could have been a Hall of Fame player. But you know, you I I it is a responsibility, I think, when particularly when you're in the position room, but particularly a quarterback. And and uh, the two things that that bother me a little bit is, you know, when you make that transition and Devontae Adams leaves and, right. you know, all the, all the ripple effect of that. Uh, and you've got young receivers that they've been, and, and Green Bay's always done a great job of drafting receivers and, and, and kind of, uh, you know, they, it's one, one cycle after another and, and they do a good job with it. But, I think it is your responsibility to be there in the off season and, and work with those young players. And I, and I also think it's your responsibility to coach them up. And I, I don't think it's your responsibility to coach them up in the media that, that kind right. of turns me off. That being said, I, I think that uh, Aaron, you know, if you look at Tom's situation and you look at Aaron's situation and, you know, two of our all time great quarterbacks uh, you know, Tom, center gone, guard gone, other guard gone, left tackle misses time, Gronk retires, wide receivers can't stay healthy two weeks in a row, defense is faltering. Uh, I think that Aaron and that formula that they showed last night, play better defense, um, yeah. run the football, and and Aaron still, boy, I'll tell you what, nobody throws the ball better than Aaron. Yeah. Uh, he is... He's an amazing player. He really is. Finally, um, you know, Brady's had a really tough – my wife said this the other day. She said when Tom got divorced, she said, you know, when you have that kind of net worth, they've been working on this thing for six months. That didn't happen two weeks ago. And so this is really hard. It's a personal drama. It's strife. It's chaos. It's brutal. Uh, and then I watched Tom, and he looks like he's 15 pounds lighter. And you can just see he's going through just an awful situation for any human being. Do you think, you know, at the end of your career, you know, you've, you've always had these stable relationships in your life, your kids, your great wife. But do you think, I mean, it, it, it's, does, do you guess Brady's back or do you think this whole thing for Brady's been tough? Where, where are you on Tom today and his future in this league? Well, I think it was kind of the perfect storm of, you know, bad. As I, as I mentioned, your, your, your pro bowl, all pro center goes down day one. Your, your one guard retires. The other guard leaves in free agency. Gronk retires. You know, the run game is not there. Uh, yeah. and, and I think that's something that if they had that, you see to me, Fournette, as tough as he is and as physical as he is, Fournette's a closure. Fournette's kind of like Zeke. You know, it's like pound you, physical. You, you, you lack that kind of dynamic element in the run game to where you can run the play action pass, get six, seven in protection. I think, yeah, you know, Tom... And and what part of it is is personal? One part of it is is football. 
you know, I, I was, you know, you watch him in a, in a press conference. I was like, somebody get him a peanut butter sandwich. I yeah. mean, you know, it, it, I feel for him because we've covered him for a long time. I had a son that played with him and won a Super Bowl with him. Uh, he's great to his teammates. He's, he is a great teammate and, and does it the right way. Uh, and, you know, you just, you never know when it's going to go, you know, I, whether it's, you know, November, December, it could go in July. And suddenly I think both of these quarterbacks are in a situation where they're like, wow, what do I do now? Yeah. Uh, and I think if I had to choose between the two, I think green Bay is probably set up a little bit better. Although that division down the NFC South, if anyone gets on a hot streak, they can win it. Yeah. Howie Long, the Hall of Famer. Good seeing you, Fox. Sunday, noon Eastern. Good seeing you. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.